Hi, welcome to the Economic Circle. This is Dr. Alex Mosley. Just doing a quick review in hopefully simplistic terms. I'm going to be missing out on quite a few of the details of the current Greek uh, default crisis in June 2015. Right, let's have a look at what we've got. Arguably, a crisis does not occur from out of nowhere. For decades, the Greek government has been inefficient, perhaps relatively more so than other governments. All governments are inefficient. And like many governments, it's passed on the burden of its overspending onto the international community by borrowing to fund and future taxpayers to pay it off. The problem, in other words, was brewing for years. And like many countries coming out of a politically turbulent history from the Second World War down to the 1970s, the Greeks had not formalised and made transparent the government, its finances and tax collection. In other words, it was a little bit in tatters when it joined the European Union. Now, the situation in 30 seconds. When an economy has a large grey market, Greece's lost tax revenues are estimated to be around €30 billion Euros annually, and it owes €337 billion, it's a reflection of an independent-minded population dealing with too much government interference and taxation. Simples. Since its supposed austerity, the Greek national debt has actually increased. It currently stands at 196%, according to some sources. Others made it 176 The vagueness also indicates that the accounts may not be in order. Oh dear. The government has also managed a, p a public sector surplus recently, although uh, reflecting some of the changes that is accepted or have to be imposed upon by the European Union and the IMF, but the Tsipras government is reluctant to increase that surplus any more. Hence the potential default coming up. That's the situation. Right. Now, one of the persistent complaints about the Greek government, and which I've just hinted at, is the taxation system is in tatters. It's too chaotic. Now, economists going back to David Ricardo, around right about 1812, somewhere around there, have looked at what makes a good tax system. Taxation should be adequate to cover government expenditure. This makes sense. Running a balanced budget is very prudent. Running a small surplus is very prudent. But Greece has consistently run deficits. Not the only country to do this, of course, but we're picking on Greece here, unfortunately, because it's heading towards a default. Taxation should be convenient. They should be easy to pay. Now, Greek finances are chaotic from many reports I've seen, which means that individuals and companies seek to avoid or evade tax, and they can easily do this. It should be neutral between different activities and sectors. Greece has an array of different VAT rates, value-added tax, or GST if you're North American, and it has nine progressive income taxes. And on top of this, employees are charged 28.06% percent on top of salaries for social security. That's another tax. So if you want to employ somebody, there's a 28% tax on employing people. Duh! Stupid! Duh! Efficient. Taxation should be efficient. Tax collection and compliance should be efficient and minimise the disruption to commerce and individual activity. That's barely the case in many countries, but the extent of tax evasion in Greece highlights the inefficiency of the entire system. Whoa! Certain and simple. According to reports, tax evasion or avoidance is a national sport. From the government's point of view, it has not created a certainty and simplicity as it's relatively easy for people to avoid paying. Equity and fairness. When taxes are seen to be unequally distributed across the country, or when, as with Greece, there is a strong independent mindset against taxes, which is not a bad thing, then avoidance and evasion will be rife. The corruption across the government sectors, which merge with large companies and get rather corrupt, is perceived to be iniquitous. So taxpayers don't want to be paying money to what they see as a corrupt regime. And surveys in Greece, believe, uh, I think about half the population believe the government to be corrupt or even more, right? Greek companies are taxed on income earned in Greece, and they're also taxed on income earned overseas. This is not equity and fairness. It's like, hang on, if you're a Greek company and you want to start branching out and expanding, becoming multinational, you're going to be taxed twice. Oh, my God. And corporation taxes are currently running at 26%. In Ireland, it's 12.5% for trading companies. What's going on there? Would you hang around Greece if you're a company with many export opportunities? You'd probably hop it to Ireland. There is a culture of tax evasion, and this is often what gets crit criticised in the news, but really this needs to be respected. When a population has a culture of tax evasion and or avoidance, it makes sense that the government will have a job paying its way. 
The Greek peoples are not likely to change their culture overnight or even for the long term. So therefore, it must be up to the government to change its culture. Now, faced with an individualistic culture, keen on keeping its money from the authorities, the Greek government must keep its expenditures and hence its taxes very low. Low. In a much more egalitarian culture such as Sweden, this has managed to reduce its debts from 70 to 40 percent over the last 20 years. These things can be done with the political will, with the right principles, and acknowledge that your people are not the kind of people who like paying high taxes. Corruption, tax avoidance, and evasion are all symptoms of weak, inefficient, and over interventionist government. Pull back. Let the people get on and pay a small amount of tax. They're probably more than happy to pay a small amount of tax, like 5% or something. That's a political decision up to the Greeks. But from all the symptoms that we're seeing, it's certainly the case that the Greeks are, are well, I wouldn't say paying too much. They're not paying it, but are expected to pay too much, right? Moral hazard and socialist projects. A moral hazard. Governments like to offer free services, high civil service pensions, engage in massive infrastructure projects like the Athenian Metro, which have helped to build the debt. And yet some of them, like the Metro, if I pick on that for a minute, charge very low prices. I got off the internet that it charges less than a euro. It's 80 cents or 40 cents for a reduced ticket for many people. Uh, and including MPs who are allowed to travel for free. Yeah, interesting, that. An unlimited tourist ticket for three days only costs 15 euros. What's that, about £12 or something? Um, dollars, thirteen dollars, fourteen dollars. I'm not sure. Now, such socialist projects get the people's attention. Nobody, ah, well done. We've got a nice metro. It's very clean, splendid trains, but only because they think that somebody else is paying for it. But there's no such thing as a free lunch. That's economics. We drive it home to you. You can't have something for nothing. Duh. When future generations are handed the bill, there is a moral hazard on the present government. When the governments borrow from abroad, there is a moral hazard. In other words, the politicians that have racked up the bills, not just the current government, but the previous governments over several decades, they politi sorry, personally do not end up paying for the bill. It's passed on to somebody else who will look after it down the road. Don't have to worry about it now. Let's have a beautiful Olympics. Let's have a metro system. Let's give the pensioners a lot more money. Let's give the civil service huge pensions. Let's give people jobs for not doing anything. Let's expand the government sector. Oh, it catches up sooner or later. Now, what's going to happen? Well, Greek default is becoming an inevitability in June 2015. The IMF and the European Central Bank are becoming increasingly entrenched in their position. Now, we're not going to give you more deadlines. And so, too, is the Greek government. Swines, they say. There will inevitably be some strange political and diplomatic games going on in the background that journalists will pick up uh, um, currently or over time. But from the economic point of view, that's our point of view, we're just interested in the logic that's unfurling, the inevitable logic. For instance, double comma, Greeks are taking as much money out of their banks as possible before the Socialist Administration nationalises the banks, which they want to do, and puts limits on withdrawals. Duh, there won't be much left. And as we approach midsummer, the situation will end in tears, riots, and damage and deaths. We hope not. But rain put stop to rioting in the UK. Cold winters in North America. Remember Occupy Wall Street? Didn't last very long once the temperatures started dropping. But Athens has temperatures reaching up to 24, 26 to 24 degrees Celsius from June right the way through to September. Hot nights, young, frustrated, hot heads, many males, 25% unemployment. Do not all go well for peace. No. And that's why some of the European unions think about sending troops in to calm Greece down, because they know what's going to happen. Sociologically, it's obvious. Right? Oh, by the way, advert, check out the Economic Circle. The reason I'm doing this is we're connecting this to a special edition I'm running, uh, the Economic Circle. This edition is free on Apple Tunes and Google Play. You download the app for free. This particular edition is for free. There's also another one on Should Roads Be Privatised? Very interesting. Why not? Let's debate it, right? Um, otherwise, there's a small subscription for free uh, fee for the other magazines. So check it out. Um, great picture. I, I got off a uh, chap, Chris, somebody. And I, I love it. I think it's great. Yeah, Spartan 300 and all that. Consequences. The debt will be defaulted on. The European Union may kick Greece out of the euro. 
Some may fear it may be kicked out of the European Union. But with Sapiris's socialists' leanings, there may, this may be just fear-mongering amongst journalists that Greece will move over to the Russian camp. It's always been a fear since the end of the Second War, that uh, World War, uh, that the British went in and crushed um, a communist uh, revolt at the time uh, to keep Greece going over to a fascist dictatorship, funny enough. Uh, but never mind. <laughs> Mistakes are made, aren't they? But I think there's a lot of fear-mongering. I think you know, Greece will be kicked out. But let's not conjecture here. Follow the principles that... If we follow the principles that Cyprus wishes to pursue, unhampered by the EU and IMF breathing down his neck. Well, we've got some dodgy things happening. The remaining elements of the debt that Greek, uh, Greece owes after a default will be inflated away by the government nationalising the banks and possibly seizing funds uh, in the bank accounts. This is always possible. Look what happened in Cyprus. That will accelerate the brain drain of young people, which currently stands at just under 2% of the population has left, 200,000 young people have left, and also entrepreneurs. As Atlas shrugs, as Ayn Rand would call it, it will become harder for the government to encourage wealth creation. Of course, because the great people are leaving. In fact, they will be discouraging wealth creation. Duh! Unemployment will rise further, as the government is ideologically committed to socialist principles. Already the tax on jobs and the minimum wage is creating 25% unemployment. People say, well, if we didn't have the minimum wage, it would be poverty. Duh. If you have, get rid of the minimum wage, more people would get work, yes, at lower rates, but at least they'll be in work and not rioting on the streets and committing crimes and damage and dying, for goodness sake. Crikey. Some people just don't listen to economists, don't they? Other consequences. Paying its debts off with an inflated, i.e. devalued drachme, the inflation will occur across the Greek economy, causing further disruption to the economy, especially price signals. And this effectively undermines the wealth of people on fixed end incomes, pensioners, whom the Greek government wants to protect, as well as undermining investment possibilities. Long term, the situation therefore does not look good for Greece without a substantial change in policy towards lower taxes, much reduced government spending, more flexible labour laws, and the abolition of social security taxes on jobs and the minimum wage and the creation of a pro-business and hence pro-job creation environment. If you're, not cre if you're not encouraging businesses, you're not creating jobs. If you're not creating jobs, you're going to have an unemployment problem. Cyprus wants to move them all into the public sector. You can't pay for the public sector if there's no wealth creation and businesses to pay the taxes. Sort your system out, for goodness sake. And as for the European Union, well, the debt that they take up from the Greeks will be passed on to the remaining nation's populations to pay, but also, funnily enough, it will be paid off in devalued euros, as the ECB has been easing the money supply in preparation for a Greek exit, which is a dumb policy to pursue, as that will reignite uh, a little bit of inflation in the European Union and lower the value of the euro on the market. Ah, oh, these people are all over the place, aren't they? It's very, very simple. Free your markets, get rid of the government intervention, reduce your spending encourage job creation through the private sector. Margaret Thatcher taught the world this, economists have been teaching the world this for 200 years plus, and a lot of people f don't want to listen and think, oh, free market, it's just about ideology, isn't it? You could be a Marxist or a free marketeer, it's just ideology. Well, we don't have ideologies in physics and chemistry, and it's the same in economics. We can argue about some of the nuances about effects, but markets work, markets produce wealth, they ensure what gets produced gets consumed properly, and if there's too much, prices will go down. If there's too little, prices will go up, creating incentives to change behaviour all the time. It doesn't need a bureaucracy, especially a corrupt one. It doesn't need high taxes, because that causes disincentives and people to leave the country, and therefore taking, encouraging your business uh, job creators to leave the country, which is shooting yourself in the foot, which is what it looks like Greece will be doing. I can't see them changing heart and going, wow, you know, the economists are right. We need to cut expenditures, we need to get rid of the minimum wage, loosen up the labour laws, get rid of that 28% tax on job creation, get more people into the private sector, open our economy up, and let the Greek spirit and ingenuity flourish. Nah, I just want to pension them off. Okay, have a debate on this, guys, but that's coming from the economic circle, so personal view sometimes. Uh, but the principles are there and for us to argue and debate about. But let's stick to the principles rather than, you know, party politics as such. Who cares who's in power? It's just Cyprus is making certain decisions and we can look at him and what his decisions are and what his principles are and therefore we can unfurl the logic, uh, the economic logic from that situation, from his principles to see what inevitably will happen. Okay, 
Let's hope it turns out all right for Greece at the end of the day, though. Um, great people, lovely people, um, great place, fantastic history, of course, and it deserves better than what it's getting at the moment. Good luck, guys. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to check us out on Apple App or Google Play uh, for the Economics Circle subscription. Okay, cheers. Bye now.